hey guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here you're absolutely welcome on this channel you're going to find diy sewing tutorials and also pattern drafting tutorials this tutorial will be on how to sew this shirt this button down shirt with rich sleeve so i'm going to be showing us how i made this shirt and how i was also able to achieve the sleeves too if you haven't subscribed to the channel please go ahead and click on the subscribe button below and without much further ado let us get started so guys to move on with the shirt i've gone ahead to cut out my fabric pieces this is my back i splitted my back into two along the center back this is entirely optional if you want your back to be a single piece that means you're going to be cutting your center back on fold and you will not split it but if you are going to split it, that means you are going to be adding seam allowance that would enable you to join your pieces together. So this is my back pattern and this is my fabric. I'm also going to be putting in a dart. So I'm going to be sewing in a dart. So this is for my back. And this is my front pattern. I cut out two pieces for the front also. And remember from our pattern, we gave this two and a half inch bottom stand allowance. So this is it. I ironed in interfacing. I ironed in interfacing and also folded it along that seam allowance. So when you put in interfacing and iron it down, it makes it easier to sew. So I cut out two panels for my front, okay? One for the left and one for the right. This is my second front pattern, all right? So I've also ironed in interfacing and I folded it along the 2.5 inch that we added so the very first thing i'll do is to sew in my dart because i want this shirt to have a dart i'll sew in my dart for both the front and the back and i would also sew this part down i would use my a matching thread to sew it very close all the way down i would also repeat this same thing here along here remember our bottom stand is 2.5 inch and I have one inch overlap, so I'm going to be sewing it along the overlap. I also cut out a collar piece, but for this shirt, I'm not going to be fixing a collar for. I'm only going to be fixing this collar stand. It, you can also call it a mandarin collar, okay? I just want it to have that mandarin collar along the neckline. But if you don't know how to draft and cut and sew a collar, I have a detailed tutorial on how you can actually sew a shirt collar okay but for this shirt i'm only going to be using the collar stand i want a mandarin collar and drafting a mandarin collar is similar to drafting a collar stand so this is my collar piece i cut out two and i use interfacing on the both of them so i'll just go ahead and sew my darts first of all and so guys i'm gonna have to pick my darts this is my front pattern okay this is just one piece for my front i picked my dart for the both pieces of my front pattern and this is what i meant by sewing along the bottom stand so i just stitch very close here and then my overlap is one inch and i stitched by one inch i did this for both sides of my front then for my back pattern i also sew it in along the center back and i picked my dart so what i'll do next is to join my front to the back so placing right sides against each other i'm going to be joining first along the shoulder okay so i'm going to be joining by half an inch seam allowance which i added along the shoulder and also by my one inch seam allowance along the side I would also repeat the same thing for this other side too so i'll just go ahead and do that all right guys so i've stitched it along the shoulder and also by the side so this is what i have on the front and on the back this is what it's going to look like this is what my clothes looks like okay so now moving on to the sleeve so guys to cut out my sleeve i folded my fabric on the bias because i want my sleeve to be full and i placed my basic sleeve block on it if you don't know how to draft a basic sleeve block i have a detailed tutorial on that and i've also marked out my desired length i just hope you can see this if you cannot just follow 
the angle of my hand. So I'm using my basic sleeve in order to create this flare sleeve. Just fold your fabric on the bias and then put your sleeve and mark out your length. Okay, so I gave a little bit of allowance along the top of my fabric because I'm going to be pleating it into my armhole area. So I'll go ahead and cut it out. Guys, for the sleeve, remember we cut it on the bias to give it some level of fullness. Okay, so I want to create a little bit of ruching here along here. I want it to be something like this, and to achieve that effect, I just from here I marked four inches upward and I notched. Okay, so what I will do is that I'm going to be creating an elastic casing from this end. All the way down to this other end I have done it for one part of the sleeve all I did was just to sew in a casing whereby I'm going to be passing the elastic through now if you don't want to sew in a casing it is optional you can decide to sew your elastic directly on it and I also use fabric bias to finish off the raw edges of the sleeve too if you don't want to use fabric bias, you can use a commercially produced bias. But I think fabric bias makes your work come out more neat, okay? So what I'll do is that I'm going to be creating my casing for this other part of my sleeve. So this 4 inch that I notch would allow me to know where to start and where to stop. It will serve as a guide, okay? So for the casing, I'm going to be using this long strip of fabric, okay? So that's what I'll use for the casing and also to sew in the raw edges of the sleeve. Once I'm through with the casing, I'm going to be fixing my elastic this way. I will secure one end of my elastic with a safety pin, okay? Then I'm going to be passing it through the casing. So it's going to come like this through the casing. Okay guys, so I've run the elastic through it, passing it through the casing and I gathered it back to my round sleeve measurements plus 2 inches seam allowance that I will use to join the sleeves together. So what I will do is to place right sides against each other this way. Push this out a little bit. Okay, I will just push it out. I don't want to have gathers along here. And then I'm going to be sewing it from here all the way down so that i can have my sleeve as a single piece so guys i'm gonna have to sew it all the way down and on the right side this is what my sleeve is going to look like so this is the effect that i'm trying to achieve okay so what i'll do next is to fix this sleeve to my shirt okay so to do that i'm going to be matching the side seams I would make sure that the side seam of the sleeve and the side seam of the blouse matches up. I'm going to be pinning it down. I will also match up the tip of my sleeve, that's the crown of my sleeve. I will also match it up with my shoulder seam and I will go ahead and pin it down. Then I'm going to be sewing it all around. Remember when we were drafting, we added allowance, so I'm going to be gathering that allowance along my sleeve. So I'll do this for both of the armhole of my blouse and then I'll show us the results. So guys, I'm done fixing the sleeve, okay, so I fix it on the both hands and I also use fabric bias to finish off the end of the shirt too, okay, so this gives it a very neat finishing. What is left now is the collar. Remember I said I'm only using the collar stand pattern from the video. I have a tutorial on how to make a shirt collar, okay? But I'm not going to be using a shirt collar for this. I'm only going to be using, fixing a mandarin collar. And the pattern for a mandarin collar also follows the same pattern for a collar stand. So if you don't know how to do it, you should see my video on how to cut and so a shirt collar okay so i ironed in interfacing on both ends on both sides of my collar piece and i placed right sides against each other 
of one part of my collar i folded it upwards by half an inch i folded it on both ends before sewing this would allow me to properly fix my collar so this is what i have what i'll do next is i'm going to be using my pins to secure the collar along the neckline so because i folded in one part of the collar i'll just match up this end and then align it with my bottom stand okay so it makes it easier to align and then i'm going to be securing it with a pin I would also come to the other end and then match it all up okay and then secure it with a pin then I'm going to be securing the rest of the collar with a pin and I will sew it all around once I'm done sewing all I have to do is to just flip my collar piece this way and then I'm going to be sewing it down okay so I'll show us the outcome once I'm done so guys I'm done sewing it on one end what I'll do next is to just flip it inward and then cover, okay? So because I pushed this inward by half an inch when I was joining the color piece to make it one piece, and, I, and because I also ironed, it will make it easier for me to close up my collar, okay? So all I have to do is to just fold it inward and make sure it covers this stitch, and then I'm going to be running my stitch all around it from one end to the other end. So you can also employ this method in sewing your collar. So can you see, this is what my collar would look like once I'm done sewing. So guys, I'm done sewing and this is what we have, okay? So I like, this is just a tip. I like to finish up my collar on the right side. This would allow me control my thread, okay? And on the flip side, this is what I have also. So the next thing I'll do now is to mark where I want to fix my button hole, okay? So this is what my shirt is looking like. For a female shirt, the button hole is on the right, while the button stand, that's the part that would carry the button is on the left. So this is the right side of my fabric, okay? If I place it this way, this part goes to my right side, okay? So I'll just turn it around and then i'm going to be marking the points whereby i'm going to be putting my button hole okay so i would have a button hole here i'll just use my chalk to indicate i'm supposed to have a button hole here okay then from that hole i'm going to be marking 2.5 inches downward first of all i'll mark 2.5 inch downward and from this hole, I'll go ahead and mark 3.5 inch downward. Okay. So I'll keep on marking 3.5 inch until I get to the end of my shirt. I don't know if you can see this clearly, but I've gone ahead to mark out where I want my button hole to be. 2.5 inch downward from the initial button from the collar and the rest are 3.5 inch apart so i'll just go ahead and then fix my button hole and also fix buttons on this shirt and i would show us the outcome 